Hi everyone, I'm Daryl Steinberg, your mayor, um, and I wanted to talk to my fellow Sacramentans tonight to give you an update, which again I hope to do nightly or at least every other night, on what's happening with uh, the COVID-19 crisis and our Sacramento community. I hope you're all safe and doing well tonight. Uh, like many of you, I'm working from home um, and not getting out in the way I usually do, but it is a worthy sacrifice uh, for all of us because the more we continue to practice this unorthodox social distancing, the fewer people who will get sick, the less the, the surge and the pressure and the demand on our healthcare and hospital systems will be, and the more lives we will save. I'm trying to stay connected in many different ways, including this new Facebook Live platform. This is the second time we've done it. We did it a couple nights ago, and I know that I was upside down. I was not actually standing on my head. But, uh, you know, we are all learning as we go here, including a 60-year-old guy learning all this new technology. So thank you for bearing with me. But I got some things I want to talk about tonight and I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, first of all, last night the City Council made a little bit of history itself. We had our first virtual City Council meeting and uh, it actually went off without a hitch. Um, all the members got to participate. The public comment part of it is sacrificed, unfortunately, so we're gonna try to continue to figure out a way that the public can participate, but we can continue to do the city business even virtually. It was a very productive meeting uh, even though we couldn't uh, be there in person. I just think it is really important that your elected officials uh, be working to keep you informed at all times that we continue to do the city's business even in this really weird and extraordinary time. Um, like I said, I want to do these Facebook uh, live events, if you will, uh, as many nights as I can at 6 p.m. At the end of each day, I want to tell you what I know what's coming, and hopefully some good news about what government, business, our community groups, and everyday people are doing to step up to help each other. So here's the latest on where we stand. Statewide, as you know, 2,681 people have tested positive for the coronavirus, and 60 people, unfortunately, tragically, have died. As of this morning, Sacramento had 113 confirmed cases, so unfortunately, our cases are rising too, and five tragic deaths. We know that the number of cases is likely far higher than the 113 because of the way testing has lagged. I'll talk about that in a moment. There is some good news on the testing front. It's becoming more widely available thanks to our healthcare partners. The UC system, private laboratories, and Verily, a subsidiary of Google's parent company, is offering three free drive-through testing uh, throughout Sacramento County. Actually, only at one site now, although the health systems, again, have their own limited testing. Unfortunately, it does not mean that you can drive up to Cal Expo and get tested. We still need to reserve the limited testing capacity we have for people who are symptomatic for coronavirus, especially our first responders and our healthcare workers. If you think you might have it, just call your healthcare provider or fill out the online screening tool for the Verily testing at projectbaseline.com. This is an area where obviously uh, the federal government needs to step up in a major, major way because this is not just a Sacramento problem, a California problem but a national problem. And until we have more widespread testing, we're not going to be able to change, I believe, any, in any dramatic way from the social isolation, which is the only tool we have absent testing to prevent the more rapid spread of the virus. Overall, in Sacramento, I would say we are doing a very good job of following the state and county orders to stay home except for essential trips like getting groceries or going to the pharmacy, and to maintain that physical distance from each other. A company that has been using cell phone data to rate how well people and cities have been doing gave Sacramento County an A in terms of maintaining their social distance. So um, it's an A, but it's only a midterm 
or maybe a quarter term because we still have a ways to go and I want to make sure that we keep that um, strong protection in place for our fellow Sacramentans. We cannot relax. A surge in cases is expected uh, for hospitals around April 1st. And again, it's very clear. You see this on any of the network news channels, anything that you read. The only way to slow the surge absent testing and to stop this pandemic from becoming much worse is to not spread it by coming in contact with others. Please, please, Sacramento, remain vigilant. It is worth it. If we do, this will take less time and people's lives will be saved. Of course, the orders are reasonable. You can still go outside and enjoy some fresh air, as long as you maintain a physical distance of at least six feet from each other. The city and county both advise parents not to let their children use playground equipment, which I know is a really hard thing. You know, a better solution probably would be able would be to say, make sure your kids wash their hands after they play on the playground equipment. But because caution is the watchword here, I reluctantly agree with the city advice uh, and in fact the decision to shut down the playground equipment because it just is the way it has to be for hopefully as short a time as possible. We do get reports that some people in Sacramento are still congregating, and we have seen an increase in 911 calls with people calling to report them. You can call 311, not 911, if you see people congregating in large gatherings. Please do not call 911, as that line is reserved for true emergency responses. Most people in Sacramento are stepping up in a heroic way to deal with this extraordinary disruption. But as always, we are unfortunately seeing some people trying to take advantage of others. Please do not open any emails or attachments from unknown sources. The United States Attorney General warns that scam artists are online selling fake cures for COVID-19. I'm really, how low can you get. Phishing emails are also coming from entities posing as the World Health Organizations or the Centers for Disease Control or Prevention. Beware of unsolicited emails and independently verify the identity of any company, any charity, or any individual that contacts you. I know, of course, that there is tons of understandable anxiety out there about what the coronavirus is doing in real time to our economy and what the impact will be as this continues in the weeks ahead. People are really hurting and we've never seen anything like this before and we don't know exactly how uh, much the long-term impact will be. What we do know, however, is there is tons of help on the way. On Tuesday, my colleagues and I approved a moratorium on commercial evictions for business tenants hurt by the coronavirus. That is on top of the protection that we passed, and not every city in the state has done this, for residential tenants. You can't be evicted if you cannot pay the rent temporarily because of the coronavirus. It doesn't mean that you don't ever have to pay your rent. You'll have four months after the crisis ends to make up for the loss of, uh, of income and to catch up on your rent. And so the question has been raised quite a bit, well, what about the landlords? What about the owners? What about um, those who have to pay the mortgage every month? Today, Governor Newsom announced that more than 200 banks and credit unions, including four of the largest ones in the state, have agreed to give 90-day waivers on payment and foreclosures for people who have been hurt by COVID-19, I personally have talked to a number of our community banks and commercial banks in the Sacramento area, and they have told me that they would extend the same kind of protection, the same kind of courtesy to uh, commercial owners as well. We all have to help each other here. There should not be foreclosures either for commercial or residential owners because they aren't receiving the rent payments from their tenants during the corona crisis. We can all get through this together. Of course, you all know that 
the Senate, United States Senate, is poised, we hope, to pass a nearly $2 trillion federal stimulus plan that includes direct payments of $1,200 for most individuals, phasing out at incomes over $75,000 for an individual and $150,000 uh, for joint filers. It also includes $150 billion for state and local governments, which will help your city and county uh, ensure that we can provide the direct services to people. The direct assistance is going to be huge. Maybe the most important part of the federal stimulus plan is the assistance for small business and for unemployed workers. For small businesses, um, and hopefully the federal government working with the state and locals can get this money out as quickly as possible because we know you're hurting. But large loans will be forgivable to small businesses if you're able to keep your employees on the payroll for the length of the crisis. More detail to come and um, access uh, your Sacramento Metro Chamber website and your Sac Asian Pacific Islander websites because they're the ones who are kind of organizing uh, all the resources in this area, but forgivable loans for small businesses if you keep your employees on the payroll. And of course, for individuals, uh, unemployment assistance is going to be much larger. An additional uh, six, uh, excuse me, an additional amount of state uh, a federal dollar, $600 per week, in addition to the state unemployment benefits that will make it a little bit better for people who are out of work. None of it is going to be enough, but it is the single largest stimulus uh, package in federal history, the largest bill in federal history. I commend our congressional delegation, as well as uh, Speaker Pelosi and Senator Schumer, for working on a bipartisan basis, uh, help is on the way. And then of course, there's the outpouring of generosity in our own community. A relief fund established earlier in the week called Donate for Sacramento, that's the number four, has already raised $451,000. And the goal is a million five or higher. Organizations like HealthNet, the Sierra Health Foundation, Comcast, and Tiger have made big donations, but the fund needs all of our contributions, no matter how small. So go to donateforsacramento.org. There's so many needs in the community, and I won't necessarily talk about them all tonight, but uh, we're working really hard on food delivery because there are so many low-income families and students and senior citizens living in our public housing complexes who need food. And so our food banks, uh, our nonprofit organizations are working heroically to try to make sure that nobody goes unfed, but they need money in order to be able to deliver. If you have lost a job or your business is suffering or you need help in any way, please visit my website at engagesac.org. That's engagesac.org. We have a whole page devoted to coronavirus, so just click on the buttons to find resources for both individuals and for businesses. Another area we have been working hard these past two weeks is to find a way to bring more homeless people indoors. And so as you know, this has been a goal and a passion of mine, not just as your mayor, but as chair of Governor Newsom's statewide task force, I have called for a legally enforceable mandate to bring people indoors. And in real time, we actually have an opportunity to do that. This afternoon, the county, working with the city and Sacramento Steps Forward, made a great start. They have committed uh, to 683 new beds as quickly as possible, uh, leasing vacant motels, um, using existing housing vouchers and, and vacant apartments to get people housed. In addition, the state is, uh, is delivering 63 trailers to us that we're going to be able to use for homeless people. Now, here's how this is going to work. The county, again, working with its partners, is working to triage people, people who are in the existing shelter system, who are either vulnerable to COVID-19 or showing some symptoms. We're gonna to try to move them out of the large volume congregate shelters 
into individual trailers or individual motel rooms or more um, discrete uh, uh, settings in the existing shelters. Um, once we get through those people who are living in the large shelters, we're then going to move to the unsheltered homeless population and triage people in the same way I described before. While the start is 663 beds, I am very clear that working with our county partners that we can get much higher than that. We can get to 1,800 or 2,000 beds and use this crisis to actually get more people who are vulnerable to, to the virus, but who are vulnerable to the most terrible of conditions by having to live on the streets for long periods of time indoors. Um, and the issue is not the number of beds. We have plenty of beds. In fact, hotels and motels are stepping up big time to offer us beds as they are dealing with severe vacancies. The issue is we're trying to build the capacity through our volunteer networks, through our county resources, through our city resources, through state emergency services resources to be able to navigate a couple of thousand people to more motel and hotel rooms, to be able to actually provide the services to them and to be able to operate the hotels or motels as temporary homeless triage centers. We can do this Sacramento and over the days ahead, we're gonna go from 663 to higher, but it is a great start. So, I move on. I have given a lot of information tonight and it's not comprehensive, but that's why I wanna to try to do this as many nights as possible if you think it is valuable and maybe we will uh, work it out so that we can take questions um, on some of these equations uh, uh, as well. I just want you to have the benefit of everything that I'm learning each day as your mayor and all the things that I am doing. Um, tonight I want to close in a couple of ways. First of all, I want to thank our first responders and our health care workers. They are the heroes here because they're the essential workers who are going out um, with as much protection as we can provide them. And Lord knows we still have shortages of, of personal protective care, but they are going out there and risking their own safety on behalf of others. And they don't really have a choice because we need police and fire, police officers and firefighters. And we certainly need the healthcare workers to continue doing what they're doing as we expect this surge, which everybody knows is coming. Their lives are gonna get very hard in the next few weeks and we need to support them in every way. I wanna thank the service workers in grocery stores, the delivery drivers and all the others who have found themselves unexpectedly on the front lines of these issues. There are so many ways, again, that you can help. Please make a financial contribution to the relief effort at donateforsacramento.org. Community organizations are also in desperate need of volunteers because many of those who traditionally give of their time are seniors who need to protect themselves. We're especially finding this in the food services area. So here's another website. I hope I'm not overwhelming you. Go to handsonsacramento.org. That's handsonsacramento.org, which is coordinating the volunteer response. You can also volunteer to help an at-risk neighbor by doing their grocery shopping, delivering food, taking out their trash, or walking their pet. Also consider donating blood because blood centers have seen a significant drop in blood donations during the crisis, depleting supplies needed to save lives. Finally, if you have any extra personal protective equipment, unopened masks, sanitizers, surgical gloves, face shields, um, a, a shout out to Hacker Lab, by the way, who is manufacturing a thousand face shields. Um, incredible work. Or if you have any gowns, please consider donating it for urgent use in our health system. Sacramento County is taking donations from 9 a.m. until noon and um, at, at, at the, I'm sorry, I'm gonna read this here. I'm having a little bit of a time here. At 9680 Conservation Road. That's 9680 Conservation Road. I guess you can drive out there and you can drop off your uh, whatever you have. I want to just say a quick word about 
anxiety because it's a word that's on everyone's mind. And I know I talked a little bit about this on Monday night, but again, I was upside down a lot of the time, so maybe you didn't hear me. If you are feeling anxious, um, please know that you're not alone. It's a very normal feeling. Um, if you're feeling distressed, if you're feeling depressed, that's also a very normal feeling. And we'll talk in subsequent uh, chats about where you can access help and support. But I just want to tell you, as your mayor, um, I'm working hard, but I'm feeling it too. And if I'm feeling it, it's okay for you to feel it because we've never been through something like this before. I've been through many crises. I was the president pro tem during the state budget crisis of 2009 through 2012. I thought that was the hardest thing I've ever been through. Obviously the Stefan Clark um, crisis in our community during the last couple of years and all the ups and downs. This is really unique in part because we all have so little control. Um, but we do have control over what we can do for each other uh, to help each other during this time. And I just want to assure people that if you're feeling a little depressed or a little anxious, you're not alone. And if you're not feeling anxious or a little bit down at times, maybe you're not taking this seriously enough. So be um, good to yourself and be easy on yourself. Uh, finally, I'm trying to end each one of these little sessions on a really positive note. Um, this Friday, members of the City of Trees Brass Band is going to play in Midtown from noon to 1 p.m. while practicing appropriate physical distancing. They will each stand on a separate corner and play. So I guess they're just really out taking a walk playing music, kinda. If you're out, enjoy the music from a distance. Um, thanks for spending the time tonight. By the way, I hope they uh, can, can uh, do what they're doing virtually too, and maybe there's a Facebook Live so that people can listen to the music from their homes. That actually would probably be a better way to listen than to gather outside to listen to them. Um, thank you for spending the time tonight. Take care, protect yourself. I'll talk to you again tomorrow night.